every gear review I have watched lately on YouTube features some sort of a power pack in order to recharge your equipment. Indeed, probably everybody on the trail is using them. Here's an example of uh, one that has a 2 amp output and it contains four cells. There's such a variety and everybody seems to have a different recommendation. There's one that holds one, there's one that holds two, there's one that holds three cells. The number of cells, they're in parallel, so that dictates their total capacity expressed in milliamp hours. Now, let's go to the basics. I recently watched a video where the producer recommends this particular power pack as being the absolute best you could possibly get. That instantly made me raise my eyebrows. Uh, the milliamp rating seems a bit specious given the form factor of it and I kind of thought this seems to be a common theme and everybody that's buying these power packs is basing their assessment based on Chinese milliamp powers and Chinese milliamp powers are notoriously overrated. So take a look at this cell here. This is an 18650 cell. It's the most ubiquitous cell on the planet and was used by Tesla until they've upgraded to the 21700 cell in their Mark III series. For now, consider this still to be the number one cell available. And this is the Panasonic NCR 18650B. And one of the reasons it's so highly thought of is it puts out 3400 milliamps. In other words, you would require three of these in order to make up a 10,000 amp hour battery pack. So, based on that, look at the price that these generally sell for. Roughly in the 14 to 15 dollar range for each cell, which means for three of these cells, you're gonna pay anywhere in the vicinity of 40 some odd dollars. Um, ones that go cheaper on Amazon and other places are suspect because this is also, because of its popularity, a highly counterfeited cell. And so if you're buying them, you really have to make sure you're getting them from a good supplier. Part of my journey through life was spending lots of time going through various suppliers offshore until I finally arrived at one, which I have now, which always sends me proper cells, which is very comforting. So beware of that when you are getting these cells. One of the things to do is weigh them and uh, make sure, but that the smarter ones will just put lead pellets in some of them. So even that is not a good indication. The best indication and about the only one you can do is do a discharge test on them and see what they have. So moving on, here is what I pack. This is my, I, I use this case because I can put this on my belt and use a long cord and power a headlamp with the USB on it if, if I need be. I carry one of the Panasonics in there and this is a Miller. It allows me to switch the batteries in and out so I can discharge them one at a time and I can pack accordingly. So on an overnight trip, I will only take one cell. On a multi-day trip, I might take more than one cell. So you see the green flashing light there? I'm not sure if you can see that. That's telling me the cell is almost discharged. And when I put this one in, you can see, again, I'm not sure if you can see this, all the green flashing, all the green lights there means this battery is fully charged. So it has a charge indicator on it. The latest ones of these, this is called a Miller, um, do put out two amps. Now you can probably even get them with more. There's two ports. This is the charging port. You charge it with a micro USB. The output is the standard USB and it's just that simple and also it's that light. This LED will indicate when it has got a load and is charged. Now let's compare the pack out weight of these three systems just to see where you stand and allow you to make some informed decisions. At 10,000 
milliamp hours, which is what we were comparing to, that would be the equivalent of three cells. So here's an example of a, the type of power pack where I can change the cells. And that one weighs 192 grams, <coughs> which is very similar to the unit that we're viewing now. If I'm just going for an overnight, or this is what I carry in my pack all the time, with the one cell and my cables, and here's what I have for my cables, a Type-C USB, a micro USB, and I always carry a USB light for camping. Um, for the weight, it's pretty handy. And you can turn any of your power packs into a bit of a flashlight. And the weight on that, of course, is six grams. So I don't use it as a primary light, but it is a good light for ambient lighting in a tent or around camp, something like that. There's another important factor to be aware of if you're planning on using your USB power pack to work with a bunch of equipment other than low drop devices that require charging such as your cell phone or your inReach. Here's a good example. Here is a portable device that's sold as a portable inflation device for your mat. And uh, I don't personally carry it around, but I was intrigued by it, picked one up. This is the offshore equivalent of the one that they sell in the USA. And you might think that you could just plug this into power, any power pack and it's gonna activate, which is not the case. So for example, and this even uh, is a good illustration of the difference between cells because now, even though this has got a high milliamp hour rating on it, it doesn't sustain a large uh, current output, especially on the startup surge. I think something like this is rated for two, whereas something like this NCR18650BD, also from Panasonic, puts out a much higher amp draw and will sustain higher. And cells like that, for example, are more important in devices such as e-bike batteries. Let's take a look at this then. So let's start with this Miller and see the difference. So the Miller will, the newer ones, as I mentioned, will sustain a two amp or more output. Let's look at what happens when we go to power this fan up with the higher current capacity cell, the BD. We'll see that the operation light comes on and the fan works. Now we'll put the lower capacity Panasonic in here and we see we have our green lights indicating our charge state. As soon as I hit the power, it disables the cutout circuit goes off. It means that we've overpowered the amount of current we've tried to draw and therefore you cannot run this fan with this cell. So again, you need an awareness of what your maximum current draw is going to be and if you see that you're trying to operate a device and it defeats your power pack, your power pack isn't capable of putting out enough current in order to support it. Now back to a four cell power pack and this one you can see has two outputs. One is rated at one amp which back in the day <clears throat> they thought of that as being Android for some reason and two amps they thought of that as being Apple. I'm sure that that no longer is the case. With this particular pack too, you can see there's a 12 foot, or sorry, 12 volt bayonet plug. It's probably, looks like a 2.1 millimeter input, or, and that can be a two amp input, which means that you can charge this pack faster through that connection. And if you use a micro USB to charge it, it's one amp. So 
consider that with your battery pack. Let's look at what happens when we plug it in to the 2 amp output. This one we powered on indicated that it's got full charge with four LEDs. And the pump runs. Let's remove it and put it over to the 1 amp output. Turn it on and we can see that there it's on now. And as soon as I hit it, it blew the circuit breaker. So again, you see we needed the 2 amp output and that's the only thing that would run this device.